The Yankees had to pass along some bad news regarding newly acquired starting pitcher Carlos Rodon. Rodon, who originally started the season on the IL with a forearm strain, will remain on the injured list as he is dealing with chronic back pain. Now, according to Yankee insider Brian Houck, Carlos Rodon is expected to have a cortisone injection next week. This is according to manager Aaron Boone, and the consensus is this injection will help him return to the bump sooner. However, Rodon did not seem as optimistic when asked about a possible July return to the Yankees. He said, quote, I can't put a timetable on anything. I'll get this injection and I want to throw as soon as possible, basically. But he didn't say like, yeah, July is a, is a realistic date. I want to be on the mound by, you know, July 24th or something. He's unsure and so are the Yankees. And this is not great news if you're a Yankee fan. Honestly, this is the worst news you can hear right now because if you're a fan, you're kind of hoping, man, Rodon, he come back, he'll help out the rotation, give them some support as the offense still tries to find themselves. And also, I mean, aside from Cole, the Yankee rotation hasn't been terrific. I mean, you can't say it's held their own because they're in last place right now beyond the Red Sox. I mean, that's embarrassing. And the Yankees are what, one game above 500? That's not going to fly. Frankly, the Yankees might have to look themselves in the mirror sooner rather than later and say, hey, look, you know, maybe we're not a division contending team. Maybe we're not even a last wild card contending team. Cashman and the front office and Bowen and everybody, they got to look themselves in the mirror really quick and they got to decide what they are. Are they a playoff team. Next question number one. If yes, great. Next question is, are they a division contending team? Probably not, I'd say right now. I still think they can make the playoffs with Rodon coming back and the offense, you know, doing its thing and Judge coming back and everything. I think May will be a rough month for the Yankees. I think if they can keep their head above water, they can overcome teams like the Red Sox, the Orioles, maybe even the Blue Jays if they're lucky, and then find themselves in a playoff position come, what, August or something. The Astros right-hander Luis Garcia will need Tommy John surgery. Bad news for the Strohs, and he will miss the remainder of the regular season as a result. This is according to GM Dana Brown. Now, Garcia left Monday's game against the Giantes after only eight pitches because of pain in his right elbow. That's always just not good news. Elbow, pitcher, RIP, like seriously. Now, this loss is gigantic for, for the Astros because the rotation is depleted right now. Garcia's out for the season, not to mention your Kitty is on the IL with shoulder discomfort, and Lance McCullers is still working his way back from a forearm injury he suffered back in February. So again, this is the worst news for a projected World Series contending team. I mean, seriously, this team had the best starting rotation coming into the 2023 season. Hands down, no doubt, they had a lethal starting rotation. I thought so. Everybody's young, everybody's a stud in that rotation, and now they're just all hurt. Think about it. As it sits right now, three out of their six original starters are on the injured list. One of them, with being Garcia, is gone for the year. The Astros have no choice but to basically bear down right now. I believe they're in third place in that division. You know, the division is weak, yes, but they just gotta hope that, like, the Rangers, the Mariners, even the Angels don't somehow go on this magical 15 and 5, 13 and 7 run in the month of May and, and just like make the gap between them and the division lead even wider. It, it's pretty small right now, a game and a half, that's not much. But still, you don't want that to happen. You don't want to lose momentum. And losing starting pitching can lose you momentum, as the old saying goes. Momentum is only as good as the next day starting pitcher. And right now, the next day starting pitcher is kind of questionable, for the most part, for the Astros. I mean, the rookie Brown has been pretty good thus far, so hopefully he can keep it up. But I just got to say, it's, it, the Astros got to be on high alert. Kind of like the Yankees right now, two teams we honestly didn't expect to have this much urgency going into the month of May. Now, round one of one of the greatest rivalries in baseball, at least in my opinion, uh, took place in San Diego last night. Dodgers versus the Padres. Now, LA took an early lead on an RBI ground out from Muncie, 
But Tatis tied the game at one via a home run off Clayton Kershaw in the third for his third home run of the season. Then in the fifth, Tatis popped Kershaw once again, this time to give San Diego a three to one lead. And from there, Padres did not look back as Darvish went six and two thirds. Josh Hader earned his league leading 11th save of the season, helping San Diego win five to two. However, what stole the show was the Padres trolling Clayton Kershaw. Because after the game, the Padres put an image of Kershaw crying in the playoffs from last year on the Jumbotron at Petco Park. Now, was this just trolling? Was this classless? I mean, I'd say it was classless. Look, I am all for a good trolling, and that's what rivalries are, are really all about. And I'm cool with fans doing it. I'm cool with a, a meme account on Instagram or Twitter doing it. I really am. Fans have free reign, in my opinion. Do whatever you want. I, I really don't care. And when it comes to the team, however, I think they can post something on their social media. I think that's allowed in the unwritten rules, I guess, of sportsmanship. But putting it on the Jumbotron after game one of the season series, not to mention the Padres are still in third place as the Dodgers are still in first. That might have been a little classless. I gotta say, that was a little Bush League. Especially considering Padres have been irrelevant since 2020, especially against the Dodgers. And even Padre fans can admit that one. Now, former Matt Red, Royal Angel and Oriole, Matt Harvey, announced his retirement from baseball. Harvey ended his nine-year career with a 50-66 and 66 record. He had a 4.42 ERA, a 1.28 whip, 867 Ks, and 475 earned runs allowed. Now, his best two seasons came early in his career, First in 2013, as he went 9-5, and five, posted a 2.27 earned run average, leading all of baseball in FIP with a 2.01, and had a whip under one, and struck out nearly 200 batters in 178 innings pitched. He also made his lone all-star appearance, and it was the only year he finished top five in Cy Young voting, back in 2013. Then 2015 was his second best season in the bigs. After coming off injury, he went 13-8, and had a 2.71 ERA, had a fifth of 3.05, had a whip just over one, sat down to 188 men, helping the Mets get to the World Series for the first time since the millennium year of 2000. I guess congratulations to Matt Harvey on a, a decent career, I guess. Is he a Met legend? Probably not. Mets fans, comment down below your thoughts on is he a legend, is he not a legend? I don't think he's a legend, never won anything. Only had two good years, really, so I don't think so. That's all I got. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts on the road to 1500. As always, I will. I'll catch you guys later.